Hello and welcome to the DigiStore Hardware Check. Today I'm going to talk about the content agent transcoding software. Now, unlike a lot of transcoding applications on the market, the content agent can create transcodes based on rules, based on decisions, and therefore create quite complex so-called workflows. I'm going to use the content agent in an Avid editing environment and going to show you how it can benefit from such a transcoding software. I'm going to take several camera formats and transcode them all to DNX HD. And I'm going to edit them off the ISIS 5000 central storage solution. Now, before I continue, you may wonder, why is it necessary to create DNX HD files for Media Composer? After all, Avid introduced this great feature which allows you to work natively with RED files, ProRes files, and other digital camera formats. Well, the answer is, if you use MXF files, um, you are able to take better and full advantage of the Media Composer project sharing capabilities. And furthermore, MXF files are able to carry far more metadata information that, for example, a common QuickTime file can carry. Okay, enough said. Let's take a look at what I have here. I have opened Media Composer. I have a project with 2397P, so that's my um, frame rate. And I'm basically ready to go. I just need to connect to the ISIS central storage. And if I take a look, I have here my so-called ISIS client manager. If I click on it, it will basically open um, my window to the ISIS world. I have created a username. It's called Smoke because this is actually a Mac Pro running Media Composer and Smoke on Mac. And once I connect to the ISIS, it is already mounted as a network share on my computer. So now I'm talking to the Avid Central Storage. I'm basically ready to go. I just need to get my uh, media in for this particular editor. So let's take a look how I would do that. I'm going to switch over to my Windows 7 workstation here using remote desktop. And I'm already in the content agent transcoding software. Now I have already imported various media files, for example, red files. I have um, various QuickTime codecs here, ProRes H.264, Canon H.264, and all this media is in my own content agent bin, or as content agent calls it, the store tab, okay? Um, now I would like to apply these clips to a tra transcoding workflow, which I need to create yet. Um, however, keep in mind that um, you don't need to do this manually. You can apply so-called watch folders and just copy data from the field, from the cameras directly into the watch folder and content agent is going to pick them up and do the transcode that you want it to do. Once you know what media you want to create, how do you actually make a workflow? Well, let's take a look at the tools tab over here. The Tools tab allows me to create a workflow, but it also allows me to do a variety of other tasks, um, which I'm not going to cover today. It would just take us too far. For now, let's accept I want to create a workflow. I have here my um, workflow window, and on the left-hand side, I have my so-called notes, um, my transcoding notes, my decision notes, and in fact, I would like to start with a decision. The decision is going to be, is the incoming file that is going to be processed a red file or not? If it is a red file, I would like to transcode it to DNX HD and make a watermark. I drag my decision node over to the right hand side and I can already see I have created some templates before. Now I need to create that specific red template that I was talking about. So let's click on new template and the question is going to be, is this red. Now, um, I am able to access all metadata information that a red file, for example, can carry. In order to do so, I need to load a sample file, for example, this one. And once I have done that, Content Agent picks all the metadata it can find, for example, the R3D information. And if I open the pull down menu, you can see basically every information that has been recorded into the red file is accessible. 
I don't want to go that far. I want to keep it simple. The decision is going to be made on the clip information and the media type. And the question is basically, is this an R3D file? Done. I put it into my user templates and the node appears here <clears throat> ready to use. Now, if this is a red file, I would like to transcode it to DNxHD. So the next thing I need to do is I need to drag in a transcode node. Again, I get lots of templates. At this stage, I can create new templates or I just pick one. I decide to pick a template, for example, this one here. I click OK and connect this node to the decision. Now at this stage, I'm just going to transcode to DNxHD, but I'm not doing any sort of watermarking. If I want to do watermark, I need to um, basically access the transcode itself. So let's do that. And these are the properties of basically every transcode that I can set up. Here I have, for example, selected Avid DNxHD. I have all flavors of DNxHD. I have video options, I can deinterlace the footage, I can scale it on the fly, I can repatch the audio if I want, and do much, much more. Now, at this stage, I just want to apply a watermark. I already created a watermark using the Content Agent Graphics tool, which I'm going to pick, and it's going to be this specific one called Watermark. Here it is, the watermark, this is basically a preview, um, and <clears throat> I have a, basically the logo, the Digistore logo here, and a clip name. And this is where it becomes really interesting because I would like to replace the text that I have edited in my graphics tool with, in this case, a clip name. So if I have 20 different red files coming in to be transcoded, I would like to have the burn in um, customized for every single clip. So I will always see the customized clip name um, of every single file, which is really interesting. Um, so if I want to do that, I simply click on Substitute. And in here, I have just one entry, because that's only one text field that I created, clip name, and I would like to replace this with the title of the clip. Add Substitution, OK. So far, so good. I have created and edited my transcode node. And the last step in this decision is going to be copy everything to my ISIS 5000. Again, I drag it into my field here. I have templates and of course I don't want to copy it to C. I would like to copy it to the ISIS. Once this is done, I need to connect the nodes, not only for the video but also for the audio. Now, this transcode will happen on the decision, is this a red, red file? If this is not a red file, well, obviously it's going to be something else. Um, so how would we process from here? Well, I'm going to use another decision node, and this decision node is going to look at the frame rate. I add the frame rate, I connect it, and then again, if this is 2997, I would like to make another transcode to DNxHD, but without a watermark. And this is where things become interesting because based on decisions, I can create various different, various different files um, with watermark, without watermark, um, with a logo, without a logo. Okay, so let me continue here. I'm going to grab a template that I created in my own template folder. I have, for example, 2997 to 23. Okay. Now I need to connect the nodes and let me jump forward in time. Here we are. I would like to continue with another node and that's going to be pretty much my last decision. If this is not 2997, well, then it's very likely going to be 25. So I simply select 25 and say if this is false, it needs to be 25. And then based on that decision, I would like to do another transcode. Um, the reason why I'm using different transcodes for different decisions is simply because I need to do a frame rate interpolation. So content agent can do this on the fly as well. 
So here we go. Again, I select my templates and I say from 25 to 23. Here's my transcode node, which I need to connect. And just to show you what I mean, if I go into my conversions tab, this is where I would basically set up the frame rate conversion. Let me jump forward in time and connect these nodes. Okay, I have just finished um, setting up my nodes. Um, <clears throat> so basically what I did is a transcode based on a true decision and a transcode based on the false decision. So if it's not 25, well then nothing needs to be done um, in regards of the frame rate conversion. And this is what this node does here. So as you can see, fairly quickly, if you're working with templates, you can create a quite complex workflow. <clears throat> I'm going to save this. and save this in my workflows folder. And at this stage, I could attach this workflow to a watch folder, or I can manually select my clips, which I'm going to do now. So I'm going to take my red clip, I'm going to take the Canon footage, the H.264 and the ProRes, all these four clips, and I'm going to apply a new workflow to it. I say new job, and as you can see here, down here, the, the decisions are already made. The transcode starts to kick off. And basically, at this point, I don't have to worry anymore. I just need to wait until the transcode has been done. While the transcode is going on, I would like to go back into my workflow and just point out a few more things. For example, in this particular workflow, we have one transcode happening after a decision. But of course, it doesn't need to be just one transcode. You can have <clears throat> multiple transcodes happening after a single decision. For example, you could have, if this is a red file, I would like to make a watermark transcode for Media Composer and another one for the iPhone, for example, which I can email using an email note. Here it is. Um, to a customer or to my client, okay? Okay, let's take a look at the transcode. It's almost done. It will now be copied to the ISS 5000, as you can see. And now I'm basically ready to edit in Media Composer. Here I am, and from there, I'm going to import the footage using the media tool. And as you can see, I already have the four clips with the original file naming, so this is quite important, and I'm going to drag them into my bin. If I take a look at this file, I have the logo burned in, I have the clip name replaced, so the watermarking has been applied to this clip, but for example, not to this clip over here. Okay, so I hope this demonstration gave you a good overview on how you can utilize the content agent in an Avid workflow. There are almost a million things that you can do with content agent as well. And I hope I will be able to cover that in the next videos. Thank you very much.